lovely city. Thank you to the Admirals. Congrats on the win. Great game. Hello Classic Rock fans, I am reporting just a couple of days after seeing the Dropkick Murphys perform at the UWM Panther Arena after a Milwaukee Admirals hockey game. This is actually the fourth time I've seen the Dropkick Murphys play after an Admirals game, but the first time in over ten years. So before we talk about the show from this past Saturday, let me give you a little history. Uh, about the relationship between the Dropkick Murphys and the Milwaukee Admirals. Starting all the way back in 2010, the Dropkick Murphys included a stop in Milwaukee as part of their annual St. Patrick's Day tour at the start of the year. In 2010, 2011, and 2012, these tour stops in Milwaukee all happened at the Old Bradley Center immediately following a Milwaukee Admirals game. These concerts were all free shows that happened immediately after the Admirals finished playing. Because it's been over 10 years, these shows kind of blend together for me. Uh, all I can really distinctly remember about each show is that all three were really entertaining and fun. And I will say the last show, the one in 2012, is the one that sticks out a bit. Because that show went a little sideways. One of the aspects of these shows is that you didn't necessarily have to stay in your seat in the arena. For an additional $20, you could buy an ice pass, and after the game, you could come down onto the ice where the stage was, and the Bradley Center would roll out these rugs where fans could stand on and then be right up close on the stage. And each year, like, a lot of people did this. And you get a fairly decent-sized crowd, down by the front of the stage, as well as all of the people, like myself, who decided to stay in our arena seats. Now, being that the Dropkick Murphys are a punk band, some of their fans like to mosh. And during that show in 2012, some of the fans who had bought ice passes started to mosh with each other. Not fight, to be clear, but they had their own makeshift little mosh pit where they're all kind of running into each other. Fairly typical stuff for a punk rock show, and if done correctly, not really all that dangerous. But this is something that I think was fairly foreign to the Bradley Center security team. Because the Bradley Center was too big to book acts that would usually have mosh pits. And typically when the Bradley Center would book concerts, they didn't set up the floor so that there was a section for a mosh pit. So when the Dropkick fans with the ice passes started moshing, the Bradley Center security staff moved in on them and started to try to break it up. Now, I couldn't see this because it was pretty dark. And while I take it with a grain of salt, what I had heard was that the security was being a little rough. In any case, I couldn't really see it, but the band could. And the lead singer of the band called out not the fans, but the security and said something to the effect of, and I have to paraphrase here because I don't remember it perfectly, but it was something along the lines of, hey, you security, leave our fans alone, stop throwing them around, don't fucking touch them, this is a punk rock show, back the fuck off. And it probably had even more F-bombs than that. <laughs> and someone else from the band shouted, we're not playing until you fucking leave. And surprisingly, this tactic worked. The Bradley Center security staff backed off. The fans were allowed to continue moshing and dancing. Uh, the band started playing again, and it was a little tense for a moment, a little awkward, but the show continued on. Everybody was all right. And the show was also pretty memorable because for the last song of the night, Ken Casey, lead singer, comes down off the stage puts ice skates on, and then while he's singing the last song of the night, Kiss Me I'm Shitfaced, which is, by the way, a great title, but anyway, he ice skates around the back of the arena on the rink that was uncovered uh, by the rugs. So you have the stage here, the ice pass crowd here that are standing on rugs over the ice, the soundboard, and then just the rink. And Ken skated around here, uh, while he was singing, which was absolutely hilarious. One of the most unique things I've ever seen at a rock concert. Hey, who's seen that stand before? 
Did anyone hear that I uh, made the fateful mistake of trying to sing on skates? That was not a good idea. <laughs> it, was, it was one strip tease away from being that scene in, uh, in Slop Shot, but anyway. Seeing the, the Dropkick Murphys, you know, three times in three years, this third show in 2012 was the best one yet. And at the time, despite the little snafu with the security, I thought this would continue to be a great tradition every year. Well, uh, I was wrong about that. At least until now. So, I guess that dust-up with security did cause quite an issue and it seemingly burned a bridge between the Dropkick Murphys and the Milwaukee Admirals and the Bradley Center. And the Dropkick Murphys never played the Bradley Center ever again. Now, since then, the Milwaukee Admirals changed venues themselves. They now play in the UWM Panther Arena. And also since then, and I can't believe it's already been like five years, the Bradley Center has been torn down, and it has been replaced by the Pfizer Forum. Admirals don't play the Forum. Again, they play the UWM Panther Arena, and they've played there for a couple of years now. And since, and I hate saying this, 2012 is over 10 years ago, it seems that all of the bad blood between Dropkick Murphys, Milwaukee Admirals, and the Bradley Center all of that has finally dissipated. All those bad feelings have gone away. And the Admirals invited the Dropkick Murphys to perhaps start the tradition off again, now in the 2020s, with this first show in 2023. When I saw that they were coming back into town, I was really excited, because I, I didn't realize how much I had missed that annual tradition. Those three years of seeing the Dropkick Murphys after an Admirals game was a lot of fun. Uh, even though I'm not the biggest Dropkick Murphys fan. I, like a lot of people, were introduced to them because of The Departed and their big hit song, Shipping Up to Boston. I don't know a lot of their music outside of that. I don't have any of their CDs, and that's to my regret, because... Now all four times that I've seen them, even though I didn't really know the music, I love the music. I enjoyed every song, you know. They have songs that even if you don't know the lyrics to, usually after the first chorus, you can sing along for the rest of the song because the energy is high and the lyrics connect. So this last time in particular, I had a great time. And I hope they can continue to do these shows after Admiral's Games because post-game concerts are such a cool idea and they are a great band uh, to do this kind of thing. But when you're talking about a ticket that includes admission to a game and a concert, that's value. I paid 200 bucks to go see that Bruce Springsteen show. To see the Dropkick Murphys and the Milwaukee Admirals, I paid $35. For better seats, I might add. That's value. That is bang for your buck. And that should be appreciated. So if a venue in your town is doing this kind of thing, absolutely go. Take advantage of that deal and reward the venue and the team and the band for being cool enough to do this sort of thing. I'm not a big hockey fan either. But the combination of these two things was enough to catch my interest so that I wanted to give it a shot. And going back to 2010, when I was A, poor, B, not a hockey fan, and C, mostly unaware of the Dropkick Murphys music, putting the Admirals with the Murphys was enough for me to want to check them out. And I had a great experience, not just at the concert, but at the game as well. This last game I went to, the Admirals won 5-3, and also a huge fight broke out at the end of the game, so I feel I got like a real hockey experience when I went. <laughs> and for the Dropkick Murphys, I don't know a lot of their music, but when I was listening to it live, it was awesome. It makes me want to go listen to their music. I'm absolutely going to get around now to checking out uh, the music of theirs that I should have checked out 10 years ago. 
Their enthusiasm is some of the best I've ever seen. For one, Ken Casey, I don't think, stands still at any point during the show. He paces up and down the stage the whole night, and it's awesome. Totally gets the, the fans who are up close involved, which you just love to see that enthusiasm from the front man. And everybody in the band has their moment at one point or another. One of my favorite things to see in the show was the fucking accordion player came out front and is just banging his head as he's playing, which made for one of the coolest visuals I've ever seen on stage. I was totally getting into the music long before Shipping Up to Boston played, and I just had a great time. I absolutely love how they incorporate their Irish background into the music. Their identity really comes through not just in the lyrics, but also in the music that they're playing as you see it with instruments like the accordion and the bagpipes. This is really cool stuff. It, it gives them a unique identity and a unique sound. And Ken Casey's got a hell of a voice, so it's, it's a really good time. I don't know if they play a lot of post-game concerts in other cities, because Ken did mention at the show I just saw that Milwaukee was lucky to have this sort of thing because he said a lot of venues don't do this. But this is pretty cool. This doesn't happen in a lot of cities where they have these concerts. So. Awesome, awesome by the Admirals and thank you guys for letting us be a part of it over the years. And that's true. The Dropkick Murphys are not the only band I've seen after an Admirals game. Years ago, again, like 10 plus years ago, I saw Styx after an Admirals game and I saw Huey Lewis after one. Those were both great. So, the Milwaukee Admirals are probably the most music-friendly sports organization in Milwaukee. I have to salute them for it, because again, it just comes back to value, bang for your buck. It's a two-for-one deal. You can't go wrong. Hopefully this is the start of a new tradition. The Admirals should be supported and rewarded for bringing this relationship back. I should definitely make a point to see the Dropkick Murphys, even without the Admiral's connection, because they don't need something else to draw me in anymore. They are a really good band, particularly a live band. They have the energy and the enthusiasm and the songs to make for a great show. So if you like hard rock, if you like punk rock, and you don't know any of their music, like I really didn't, don't worry about it. You're going to have fun, these songs are going to connect, and you'll leave the show feeling great. That's what happened to me, and I think that's what happened to most people who went to see them this past weekend. So if you're in the Milwaukee area next year, if they do this again with the Admirals, let's show up for the Admirals. Let's reward this tradition that's hopefully been reborn. But that's all I got to say today. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this concert review, please check out the other concert reviews I've done on this channel. If you're a rock fan, chances are I've talked about a different band that you're a fan of. If you're a classic rock fan, you should check out the podcast I do that is about classic rock. I've had a lot of great guests on lately. The link to that is in the description below, as are links to our social media pages, so please follow us there and please subscribe to this channel. So with that, go see Dropkick Murphys if you can. Keep rocking, and keep your stick on the ice.